Tuesdays at 5 p.m. on TSB TV channel 20. And the roll call, please. Thank you, madam. Commissioner Gottsnaker? Here. Commissioner Phillips? Here. Commissioner Idelson? Here. Commissioner Overall? Here. Chair Burroughs? Here. Thank you. Moving on to the agenda status report, Ms. Black is absent. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the Commission. Uh, there is today's, of course, agenda. We'll get to that uh, in a while. Moving forward and looking forward, rather, we look forward to the June 27th hearing uh, where we have uh, potentially the Prescott new single-family dwelling appeal. That's something that we'll have to take up. The specific scheduling of that item we'll have to take up uh, a little bit later um, because there's a request for continuance, uh, but not entirely agreement. Also, we may have a appeal of a MBAR approval uh, that um, has been uh, submitted recently on the uh, Feather Hill property. That's all we have on June 27th. On July 25th, we Noel Langle will be bringing uh, for your consideration the special events ordinance amendment, which is something that is of very much relevance and a lot of interest uh, across the county uh, in Montecito and elsewhere. And in addition, uh, we uh, intend on July 25th to bring the agricultural buffer ordinance forward for your consideration. There isn't a lot of agriculturally zoned land in Montecito where this would apply, but there is some, so we would very much appreciate your input on that uh, ordinance as we move it forward, uh, hopefully for approval to the Board of Supervisors. At this point, August and September are, are somewhat speculative, so I think that probably uh, I'll stop right there as far as the future agendas are concerned. Okay, thank you very much. We'll now move to public comment. I'm sorry. Chair Burroughs, yes. um, just a point of clarification. We, we still are on for June 6th, are we not, for the uh, Highway 101, 101 joint here. hearing? Mm -hmm. um, yes, um, thank you for reminding me of that, Commissioner Overall. We are on for June 6th. I just did, didn't see it. It was listed funny. Thank you, Commissioner Overall, for catching that for us and for the public. <coughs> we'll now move to public comment. <coughs> Excuse me. This public comment is for um, anyone who would like to address the Commission on any item that is not on today's agenda. Do we have any speaker slips? I didn't submit a slip, uh, but I'd like to speak. Um, all right. Uh, Mr. That's Mons, would you please fill out a slip before you leave? or? Sorry about that. Go ahead, please. Uh, good morning. My name is Charles Mons. I'm here uh, just as a member of the public to uh, remind the commission that on June 22nd last year, uh, you had a briefing by your staff uh, concerning uh, issues that were brought to you by uh, members of the Coral Casino. And at that time, you directed your staff to uh, consider uh, or reconsider the report that it provided to you at that time. You acknowledged that report but did not accept it. Uh, on, in Ju uh, excuse me, in November, November 23rd, uh, the staff was reminded of uh, the pending supplemental report and as to date, no report has been uh, uh, been announced that I'm aware of. I did speak to Diane Black last Friday. She told me that there's some preliminary report that's been completed uh, and that uh, in the near future, that report's going to be made available. So I'm just asking you to be aware of that uh, and to uh, agendize that when that report becomes uh, available. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mons. And if you'd fill out a speaker slip. Anyone else for an item not on today's agenda? If not, we will move forward to the Planning Commissioner's informational reports. Commissioner Gostanger, please. No, I don't think I have anything to report. No. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Uh, uh, Danielson, please. 
<coughs> just make a comment on something that I think is of interest to everybody, and that is the the state has recently passed a ruling that we have to do away with redevelopment districts, and it's been very interesting a meeting. I've been working on two of them, and uh, we turn in the reports uh, on a regular basis to the state, and they proceed to usually find something wrong with it. And uh, so it's, it's kind of interesting just to follow this whole process. It seems that the state is short of money just the same way that districts are. And uh, they're trying to get their hands on as much of the money that, that is in the redevelopment districts. Thank you so much. Commissioner Overall, please. Uh, the, the only thing I would comment on is there have been a series, uh, since our last hearing uh, related to Highway 101, there have been a series of community presentations uh, conducted by the Montecito Association and I've attended uh, several of them um, and uh, the, the, the debate goes on I, I guess at this point but we uh, we have the uh, our last shot at making comments on the draft environmental report on the June 6th so I think any additional input that we can get from the public uh, before we do that would be a good idea. Thank you very much, and I have no report at all on um, the Commissioner's informational reports. We'll now move to consideration of the minutes of May 2nd, 2012. Is there a motion from the uh, Commission as to accepting the uh, minutes? <coughs> so moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. We will now move to Dr. Russell's uh, Director's Report, please. Good morning. My report will be r relatively brief. Uh, we, since your last meeting on the 2nd, there have been three supervisors' meetings that I can report on. On the 8th, uh, and also another item, related item on the 15th, um, the board has now put in place the two-tier retirement system. So anybody hired after um, a certain date in June will now be hired under the uh, new uh, lower-tier system. So that is in, in place. On the 15th, we finally heard the many times continued Santa Barbara Ranch consent to transfer uh, approval. And uh, that uh, was um, uh, the issue of a new company, a new uh, partnership purchasing the um, land, the project from the bank. And the Board of Supervisors decided that they did not have enough information to either consent or not consent to the transfer. So they chose not to do anything because of lack of information. Because of the way that the Inland Development Agreement is written, that there was a 45-day clock that uh, they had to take action within 45 days. That clock had been stopped during the continuances, but basically that clock expired at the end of that hearing. And so even though they did not take action one way or the other, it is deemed, because of the expiration of the clock and the language in the Inland Development Agreement, uh, the board, uh, the, the consent is deemed to have taken place. So that transfer is uh, deemed consented to. In addition, we had uh, the Goleta Beach um, contract, uh, the acceptance of the grant and the award of the contract to do the EIR for Goleta Beach um, version 2, which is uh, one which we hope will be uh, more um, more acceptable to the Coastal Commission certainly because they didn't accept the first version and on um, yesterday the 22nd uh, there were a couple of uh, set hearings and the most interesting item of the day for from my perspective was the Park Hill Estates um, in the uh, Eastern Goleta Valley uh, foothill area the Park Hill Estates appeal of the County Planning Commission's determination that an environmental impact report was required, a focused environmental impact report was required for the project. Uh, there was much discussion. Uh, it had been continued from an earlier date, so staff could bring back additional information specifically regarding fire safety issues and conditions that had been placed upon uh, uh, projects approved in the past in the vicinity of this project. And uh, Supervisor Wolf uh, had to recuse herself because she lives very near to the project. So the four supervisors ended up voting 2-2 to uh, require an EIR. So the motion failed, 
and it sort of leaves us in a little bit of limbo uh, uh, the, uh, uh, as far as what will happen next uh, with that project. But the requirement for the EIR, uh, the appeal of that requirement, came to a no action, 2-2 two -two vote. Those are the items that I have for you today on the director's report. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Any questions? Thank you very much. <coughs> we'll now move to the consent agenda. And please read C1 into the record. Thank you, Madam Chair. The following is the request of Jeff Havlick, agent for the Santa Barbara County Public Works Department, to consider case number 12, GOV 11, application filed on April 19, 2012, for a determination that vacation of an unused right of way burdening a portion of the property located at 932 Park Lane in Montecito is in conformity with the comprehensive plan of the County of Santa Barbara pursuant to Government Code Section 65402A. Thank you very much. Is there a staff report on this item? Ms. Lou, please. Uh, Chair Burroughs, because this is a consent item, I have not prepared a formal staff report, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you have on the 65402. Thank yes, you. Does, the, uh, does the commission have any questions on this item or comments? Commissioner Phillips. Thank you. Um, it's precious little here. Um, is it, am I to understand that the um, property owner has agreed to this and we'll continue the maintenance on this road and or not the, this non-road or whatever this is this area is that what happened chair Burroughs, commissioner phillips um, the impetus for the 65402 is because a portion of park lane is becoming to be undercut by a culvert that outlets on the property owner's um, parcel and he's come in with a plan to help to restore that and revegetate both the area right adjacent to Park Lane all the <coughs> way down through his property. And in order to do that, he would either need to get um, permission for road encroachment or um, would, a, would need to obtain the property in this manner. So he, um, the request came from the applicant, uh, from, the, from the property owner himself and there is a plan to maintain and revegetate this area in perpetuity. So it would shift from the responsibility of the county to maintain that, that area and that culvert over to the property owner. And he is um, the individual who requested this 65402. And I, um, Jeff Havlick from Public Works is here, but it's my understanding that Public Works is also um, supportive of the road right of way vacation. I don't recall us seeing anything like this since we've been in business. Why would a property owner do this? Any sense of that? Commissioner Phillips, I, I think I'd, I, I don't see the property owner in the audience, so it would be difficult to speak for him, but I do know that this is a part of an overall improvement project on his property, and in order to complete the full restoration of the area attached to the culvert in a way that would treat the, dr the drainage properly, then this area would need to be a part of, of, the, of the project. So he has more freedom now to uh, implement his design uh, concept? Exactly. I see. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Do we take public comment on this? I suppose not, since we have not had a report. Yes. Uh, Madam Chair and Commissioners, uh, yes, I would recommend that you take public comment. Just call to see if anyone's here to speak. <laughs> Thank you. Would anyone here like to speak to this item, like to comment on this item? If yes, please. Um, would you please take go to the podium and please fill out a speaker <coughs> slip? You can do it afterwards. Yes, you can do it afterwards. Thank you. For our records, we like to have those. Sure. Thank I'm you. my name is Denise Salick and I represent the owners at eight seven five and eight eight five Park Lane. And I was wondering what the impact is on neighboring properties, if any, of the culvert being possibly cleaned up or Redirected. Miss Lou. 
I believe I can comment on that. The so the the 65402 is a little bit of a separate action from the land use permit under which the physical development would occur, but I am also the planner for the land use permit and um, what that would do was restore a slope um, adjacent to Park Lane that has started to fail because of undercutting underneath the culvert. So it would restore that and we have a drainage study that, that was prepared for us to um, show that after implementation of the plan, the amount of runoff leaving the property would actually either be the same or less than the amount of runoff currently and we knew that that might be a concern for neighbors so that's why we looked into making sure that the the runoff is actually um, hopefully being treated better following completion of the project and there's also provisions for temporary revegetation as it's going on so there's not a temporary situation you know where there is excess sediment or anything like that going off site thank you thank you so much any other comments? Any comments or questions from the commission? If not, do we move forward on this with um, a motion to accept, uh, to consent to the, um, to the item? Or is that done by consensus? Madam Chair and Commissioners, um, yes, you do it by, by motion to um, accept staff's recommendation. Okay. Okay. Is there I a make a motion that we uh, approve staff's recommendation. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. It passes. We'll now move on to the standard agenda. Madam Chair, yes, um, I have a, s a small recommendation to make, but of course please. you can proceed in any manner that you wish. We have two items on the standard agenda. The first item is a, uh, a standard hearing item with a uh, uh, presentation uh, normal item. The second item is actually a request for continuance yes. on the appeal of the Prescott residence and driveway. Um, we received um, a request from the attorney for the Prescott project to uh, continue the scheduled public hearing for the appeal of the Prescott project from May 23rd today to June 27th. Now, P&D ha staff has no objections whatsoever to this request. However, the attorney for the appellants has indicated that <coughs> his team is not available for Montecito Planning Commission hearings in June, July, or August. So this kind of presents a, uh, a, a, an issue that we should probably address today. We, we, under we expect that representatives of the applicant <coughs> and the appellants are here today. Um, but uh, uh, if you wanted to wait and take this up later, you could, or we might be able to dispense with this uh, quickly first. It's, it's uh, certainly up to the commission. Um, out of respect for those who are here to speak to the item, I would suggest that the commission move this forward to be considered at this point and the Verizon after uh, the Prescott. Do we have agreement on that? <coughs> Any objections? If not, then we will go to consent, go to item item two on the standard agenda, please. Madam Chair, as I mentioned, uh, we we have had a request for continuance, but uh, there is some issue. Uh, our representatives of the applicant and the appellant here today to uh, uh, discuss the 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 request. Your present. Let me read that. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm read sorry. that into the record. Um, we'll please read it into the agenda, the item into the agenda, uh, into the commission report. Thank you, Madam Chair. The following is the request of Fred Clough, attorney for the applicants Diane Baskin and Michael McCarthy, to consider the appeals case numbers 11 APL 23 and 11 APL 24, appeals filed on November 8th, 2011, of the decision of the Montecito Board of Architecture Review to <coughs> grant preliminary approval of case number 08-BAR-273 and the decision of the director to approve the land use permit, case number 10-LUP-109, and to determine that the project is exempt from CEQA pursuant to section 15303 of the state guidelines for the implementation to CEQA. Thank you very much. We will now move to hear from the appellant. Mm. 
Please state your name for the record, Mr. Clough. Yes, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the Commission. My name is Fred Clough. I'm an attorney here representing the appellants, Diane Baskin and Michael McCarthy. They own separate uh, residence and lots that are adjacent to the project. Uh, I have no problem with a continuance. The problem is the date. And just to give you a little <coughs> bit of quick historical background on this project, uh, I filed the appeal of the land use permit issuance and the ABR approval, I think on the 8th of November. I believe Alan contacted me early January, said they're ready to schedule a hearing in January, which was fine with us, but the um, applicant had a problem with that date. And then for various reasons, uh, applicant and my team in avail unavailability, it wasn't scheduled for hearing until I think around the 1st of April, setting it for today. And based upon that, that was you know, almost two months in advance, uh, I made <coughs> plans to uh, be in Seattle in June for a family reunion and in Europe the end of August. Mr. McCarthy, specifically to the date requested by the applicant to the, <coughs> to the continuance, I think it's the 27th of June, has a scheduled appointment with an orthopedist specialist in Denver. And according to Mr. McCarthy, you have to make those appointments several months in advance. So to reschedule would be a significant inconvenience for him. So we're here not to oppose a continuance, but to suggest that if it is continued, we're ready to go forward today, that it be continued to your meeting in September. Uh, also, this project is, is not one that's been fast-tracked by any means. They submitted their application in March of 2009. It didn't get to the ABR for um, the first approval uh, until September of 2010, a year and a half later. Uh, the uh, BAR made a number of comments, negative comments, concerning the driveway, which of course is our concern. And it wasn't until the following September, September of 2011, that it got back to the ABR for preliminary plan approval. So well, I understand a 90-day continuance is not the, the normal thing. I think under the circumstances, it's the only thing that's appropriate uh, based upon the, the outline of the background that I just provided to you. So I respectfully request that this matter be continued until whatever the date of your September meeting is. Now, one other thing, Madam Chair, members of the Commission, I think you should consider, and that is scheduling a site visit before you have your, your regular hearing on these appeals. And I suggest that because the concerns that my clients have is not the residence itself, it's the 1,100-foot driveway, which is to be proposed to access the residence through an oak woodland, removing almost an acre of oak woodland, um, generating issues with respect to drainage in connection with a uh, natural drainage course, which is on the property. And until you actually go on the property and look at it, I don't think you can appreciate it. Um, you know, you, you have the right to do that under the Brown Act as long as you notice the fact that the Commission is going to do a site visit. I don't know if you've done these in the past, but certainly City Councils, other planning commissions with whom I've been involved have done that. And I, I really suggest that you consider that seriously and do it before you have the formal hearing because without actually walking the property, looking at the site of this proposed driveway, you can't, I don't believe, adequately appreciate what's being proposed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank Any questions? Thank you so much. Any questions, Any questions for me? of Mr. Clough? Thank you. If not, we will move. Is the applicant here? And would the applicant like to speak, please? Madam Chair, fellow commissioners, we uh, understand the, the appellant's uh, concerns, and we'd love to meet in June. But we also understand uh, the conflicts with scheduling, so we don't we don't have a problem with the the pushing it out. Thank you, sir. Would you please state your name? Well, I'm, for the I'm record. Jeremy Roberts. I'm uh, the representative for the owner, Mr. Piercy. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Um, is there any public comment on um, the issues presented today? If not, is there any other information from the staff? Please. Madam Chair, I would, uh, uh, pursuant to the first speaker's request for a site visit, of course you're all well aware that you could uh, accomplish that on an individual basis without any Brown Act uh, uh, issues. So the site visits. A, yeah, so that's an, certainly a, yes. a, uh, a an option and one which might be a little bit less uh, um, burdensome than, than s actually noticing a hearing out there. Absolutely. Uh, Commissioner Overall, please. Um, I, I would just respond to that. I have attempted to visit the site, um, and I would, I, I would tell you it is not um, 
absolutely evident on the on the on the ground of what the hell you're you're looking at. And I think for us to do it individually without it being uh, well orchestrated, and and for that matter, the public having an opportunity to hear it, I think would be a mistake. I think Mr. Clough is <coughs> absolutely right to. Uh, to do adequate justice to this project, I think we need to, we, we all need to see it, and I would recommend we do it together. Um, is that a motion, or would you like to wait until Ms. Black is back and let her try to coordinate um, site visits? Well, I, I, I think, Madam Chair, that um, <coughs> since <coughs> if we all do it together, it, it would fall under the Brown Act. I think it, it needs to be noticed, and I. You know, I just think we ought to decide whether or not uh, we think that's, you know, a worthy approach. And if, if we are, I mean, I'm not going to change my mind on it. You, you all may, but I mean, I, I that's what I would advocate. So I, I could make it as a motion, or you can discuss it first, and then we can do it. All right, let's please have discussion. Um, Commissioner Costinger, please. <coughs> yes, I'm also in a, I'm a sort of agreement in with um, Commissioner's overall, um, overalls point of view on this one um, I I have been on the site and um, and have had con had conversations with the chair of MBAR regarding this project I think it is this is a project that is um, being looked at from the community's point of view you know and um, I think it would be really appropriate to schedule a g g site visit because it is a vi as very difficult to deal with um, at, at individually. You know, trying to even like kind of find your way through and get there is a problem. But once you get there, there is no way without having um, materials in front of you that you would know at all what you were, t what what was going on. So I, I all that said, I would just make a motion that um, to. Um, <coughs> That, that, that as part of the motion for a continuance that a site visit be scheduled. Thank you. Is there a second? Well, I, sure. I would second it. And I, the other uh, part of it, uh, I would add that we ought to suggest that we schedule this, continue it until September and include the site visit. I think that was what uh, Commissioner Gostanker yeah, was, was motion. I wasn't quite sure how to, there was, it needed to be two motions. I, I may have butchered it too, but at any rate, yeah. I, I second whatever that is. That's all right. Uh, for clarity then, the motion is that we will continue this item until our September meeting and that in the interim, between now and then, we will ask um, a Director Black or the appropriate um, county staff to set up a, um, a commission site visit um, and follow all applicable <coughs> rules for uh, alerting the public to this. Please. Uh, Madam Chair and Commissioners, if I could just speak to this really quick. Please. Uh, commission site visits, it's not something that we normally, normally do. And my hesitation is just that I don't know all the coordination that would be involved and all the requirements um, and the timing of that. So, I, and I would feel more comfortable knowing all of those requirements um, and that the Commission know everything that's involved and how that would actually take place um, before um, the direction is given to do that. I think it's just a matter of, of, of me looking into it a little bit more and coordinating with staff and providing you with that information. Um, it, it's certainly within the discretion of the Commission to make that determination now. I'm just letting you know I, I have concerns about just making sure we know everything exactly what's involved in that decision all right uh, madam Commissioner. chair go ahead I don't say okay yeah I I, I kind of think we should separate this and first just pass th the continuance if we want to have a continuance and then work on this site visit issue later as we approach the the date of the hearing <clears throat> so that if we're going to have a continuance it's going to go to September there's <coughs> adequate time to to make these other findings All right, Commissioner Phillips. thank you um, we do site <coughs> visits all the time and um, I don't remember wandering around people's property without a guide or someone pointing things out is the point that we want the public to be with us on this um, or is it 
<coughs> just to be more efficient? Because we could do it in two groups. And, and, and also, what is the burden for the county to, to have this um, noticed? Um, maybe that's the first place. If it's extraordinary, let's talk about it. If not, you know, I can go with the motion. Madam Chair and Commissioner Phillips, uh, that's exactly the issue that I wanted to look into. Um, I mean, each commissioner certainly has the option of, of going to the site, um, coordinating with, with um, staff to, to be there to, to help you um, know where to go or to answer questions. So that's one option. Uh, when the whole commission goes together, we are subject to Brown Act requirements, including noticing um, and, and I'm just not sure everything that's involved as far as um, transportation, what our obligations are to the public, um, how public comment would work in that setting, um, what, what, how many staff members need to be there um, in order for it to be an official meeting. So that's what that's my hesitation I just and there's lunch make issues sure. you know there's <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure we know everything sure. that's involved before before sure. we before we thank you so much Commissioner Costanger please um, given that I was the, there is a motion on the table that I was the maker of I will at this point um, withdraw my motion um, allowing um, a new motion to be put on the table and um, we'll go from there just Mr. Overall, do you loosen up the, the sure. So the motion before us um, is withdrawn, and we will now start from scratch on this. May I suggest that we that we have a motion to consider the continuance until September on this item, yes. and then consider the other issues after that date has been decided. So is there a motion, if you're in agreement, is there a motion to continue this item until our September meeting? So moved, Madam Chair. I second. Mr. Phillips. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? So we are unanimous that this item will be moved to the September meeting of the Montecito Planning Commission. Now, would the commission like to further address uh, the site visit um, to the uh, on this application, um, or would you like to do that at a future meeting? Let's uh, let's get it done, huh? All right. Um, I'm open for discussion, please. Do I have? Oh, M Commissioner Phillips, please. Um, could we just address why this is different than other site visits? The complexity of the site is has been mentioned. Um, it, it, let me ask it another way. It, would it be burdensome for staff and applicant and representatives to individually meet us? Is that too much to ask? Or should do we need smaller teams? Or should we do this together? I mean, it, it doesn't matter to any of us, I don't uh, think. Madam Chair, Commissioner Phillips, um, we could do it either way. Uh, if, uh, if, there is, uh, an in, if there is an issue with the, the site being difficult to navigate or difficult to uh, reconnoiter, we certainly could, uh, on an individual basis, assist uh, in that uh, type of a visit staff could do that uh, being a liaison with the property owner that's one way to approach it all right um, any further questions or comments Commissioner overall please um, I, the comment that I would offer is I think um, it is a complex site I think there's a lot riding on this particular project in terms of well a variety of different aspects and I think that there is a, a significant value to us all seeing the same thing and discussing the same thing together. And it's, it's different coming in here after you've been there. And Claire saw one tree and I didn't see it. We're not necessarily all going to be talking about the same thing, even though we supposedly have all visited the site. Hmm. So, I, I mean, I just think that there is some uh, significant value to the quality of the decision that we'll make for us to, to be there, look at it, be able to ask questions and benefit from the questions that other commissioners uh, ask. Um, so that's my, that's my rationale behind it. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or um, questions on whether this is a, um, a site visit for the entire commission or where uh, individual commissioners are um, uh, allowed to set up their date and time? Commissioner Gustinger, please. 
Well, once again, I do agree with Mr. Overall's um, point of view here, and I would just request that um, that uh, County Council, and before we make any, you know, fixed um, cons dates about the possibility of a group site site visit, that um, given County Council's concerns, that we requ I request that County Council and staff come back to us at our next hearing. Um, to let us know what their concerns would be and and you know and then move forward from there as far as the discussion is concerned but that Madam gives staff you know at least an at least a month if not more time to actually bring us some sort of report on how to manage this site visit that we would like to do together uh, madam chair commissioner Gottsdanker, uh if the commission would like to do as you suggest we would be happy to bring that information uh, back at the next Montecito Planning Commission hearing so that you could make a fully informed decision as to how and when and exactly what you would like to do regarding your site visit all right thank you in light of the comments from the Commission today I think that that would be very helpful um, so are we in agreement that we would request uh, County Council to research this and to come back with us on directions, suggestions, uh, so that we are in compliance with all the rules of the Brown Act? Are we in agreement on that? Yes. yes. All right. M Madam Chair. County Council, please. Commissioners, I I'm happy to work with staff on, on, on figuring out how to coordinate that. I'm just trying to think now about um, whether we want to have this item on next month's agenda if you're wanting to discuss further the site visit issue um, but then with the plans of scheduling that um, that the actual hearing would be in September so I'm just trying to figure out uh, the noticing requirements so if you wouldn't uh, mind just taking a few minutes um, if we could take a short break and I could look at that really quick just to make sure we get it noticed adequately for the next meeting. Absolutely. Thank you very much. We're in adjournment for um, five minutes. Uh, <laughs> Item number two on the standard agenda. Uh, do we have a report from County Council? Uh, Madam Chair and Commissioners, so I, I talked to staff and um, I think what the best solution is um, is to continue this item to June 6th, your special hearing. Um, and what, so what that would mean is withdrawing your previous motion to continue it to September, continue the item to June 6th, and at which time we'll be prepared to discuss the logistics and everything that's involved in a site visit and your commission can decide um, whether or not you want to schedule that site visit and at the June 6th hearing you can also plan to um, still continue that item to September um, but it'll also give you a chance to um, have the information on the site visit because you may want to schedule the site visit at a different time and coordinate the hearing time as well if, if you're deciding to go forward with the site visit. So, so, so the, the actions are, um, I would recommend you take, make a motion to withdraw your previous action, um, vote on that, and then take a second motion to continue this item to <coughs> June 6th. Okay, um, and at the June 6th meeting, we would consider um, whether or not to continue the item as well as the site, make a decision on the site visit. Madam Chair, that's correct. All right, thank you. All right, um, is there a motion um, in light of the ruling, uh, the advice from County Council to withdraw our prior motion? Um, Commissioner Idelson, please. D do we have concurrence of the applicant and the appellant? Uh, Madam Chair and Commissioner Idelson, yes, I'm sorry. To, that was part of the time that we took was to, to talk to both parties to make sure they're available on June 6th. Um, is my concern with continuing it to the next June hearing is that one of the parties already said they weren't available. So that's why we okay. looked at the June 6th date. All right. Is there <coughs> a motion to withdraw the prior motion which continued this item to September? I make a motion that we withdraw the item. Uh, the motion. Continue. Yeah, All the right. motion. All right. Is there a second? 
Um, I have no idea why we're doing this, Madam Chair. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's the continuance and the site visit are two different things, I think, but I'll, I'll second it. All right. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Commissioner Overall. Opposed. Okay. All right. So it's 4 1. We will now move forward for consideration of moving this item uh, in two parts to June 6th. County Council, please. Madam Chair, I, I apologize. I've just been told um, by D. Villalobos that uh, the June 6th hearing is, is not a joint hearing. I, I'm confused by looking at the The 101 report. portion of that is a joint hearing, right? And that's the only thing we're doing, I think. Th that's correct. So I... We're scheduled, this commission is scheduled to hear 101 uh, with the County Planning Commission on June 6th, according to my records. I think that's accurate, but I think that that, that, that was, it was uh, the last time we met, we had a hearing separate from for an hour dealing with our business then we went in to so I think the confusion here from what I'm hearing is that um, that the June 6 hearing is only there will be no opportunity for MPC for our Commission to be able to deal with our own business because we are only in a joint hearing together that's what I'm hearing anyway you know uh, I you know I think that from my from my point of view, I mean, it, it, that that the this whole idea of the site visit, you know, I don't need to know that it really. I don't understand the complexity of what's going on with county council staff. What's going on here? You know, I mean, we've got an item here that we've that both the applicant and the appellants have agreed to continue to September that's what we've done okay that so that 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 motion in my opinion should sit on the ground we've continued to this this item if we all agree on it then a d discussion on how to manage a site visit is completely off it doesn't have anything to do with that motion that we've now got on the table and discretionary I think yeah you know I mean and, and so why not move <laughs> forward with the original motion which is to continue the item to September then staff and County Council can go away and figure out how they're going to manage a site visit between now and September uh, is there I don't see I don't understand the complexity that's happening right now but I I think that that is true but is there any um, reason why this Commission could not meet for half an hour on June 6th <laughs> we will all be here for the 101 um, to decide on the site visit if County Council thinks that this needs to be decided by the Commission M Madam Chair and Commissioners, I apologize. I'm, I just asked Sharon to go and get David Villalobos. I'm trying to just figure out what's been noticed. I, I'm just trying to make sure we're in compliance with the Brown Act, both for the discussion of the site visit and for noticing for the next hearing. So there seems to be some confusion on what's been noticed for June 6th. So Commissioner. The, the issue is that if if the Commission wants to have a discussion on this project and whether or not to have a site visit we need to to notice that at a hearing the next he the next three hearings one of the parties is not available so that's what we're trying to to work out my sense of the Commission is that we would like a site visit um, so I think in it seems to me that what we need to decide is a date that would be uh, applicable and then uh, that would be okay and then decide how to make the site visits in compliance with the Brown Act is that where we are uh, madam chair and commissioners it, it's within the discretion of your Commission to determine whether or not you want to schedule a site visit 
and exactly. my original recommendation was I just wanted your commission to have the full information of what that meant um, before before we went forward with that but of course if your commission would like to go ahead and schedule that site visit that's up to the commission um, and in that case it looks like we may be pushing it to that decision until either June 6th or September M Madam Chair w and Commissioners, w what I would suggest is um, uh, perhaps we should just trail this item and actually meet and, and, and figure out. I, I guess has the Commission um, made a determination? I, I, I can't tell from what the Commission is saying whether the majority wants to go ahead and have staff figure out the site visit or if we want to continue that discussion and wait for more information from staff. Madam Chair, could you just take a sense Dr. of Russell, the commission? Did you have some? Oh, Commissioner O'Brien. Could you just take a sense of, of the commission as to whether we would like a, a site visit or not? I think, yes. Um, uh, is there any um, does the commission is the commission in agreement that we want a site visit to this property uh, please uh, say aye 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 yes a yes unanimous <coughs> yes madam chair um, in, in a world of seemingly less than ideal selection of options uh, I want to make you aware of, of one option uh, un understanding that one of the parties uh, apparently there is a there's an issue with the the, the way uh, that the June 6th uh, hearing has been noticed uh, so it will, we can we can look into that uh, further or understanding that we do have consensus from the applicant and uh, the appellant on when they actually like to have the hearing which is in September one thing that we might be able to do is continue the uh, uh, the whole item um, to uh, the June hearing, the June 26th hearing, uh, understanding there's one uh, party that can't be here. Um, I believe that there is consensus as to the September hearing, and so uh, even though they might not, they uh, have said that they can't be here, we could um, uh, continue the entire item to the June 26th and uh, have the decision as to when, if, and how the site visit could take place as well as the actual formal continuance of the item to the already agreed upon September hearing. Mr. Madam Clough, Chair, please. could I make a suggestion? Please. Fred Clough again. I suggest you do the following. First of all, renew your motion to continue this to the September meeting of the MPC, which I think is the 27th. Second thing I would do is suge suggest that you make a motion to schedule a site visit for the week before that specific date go ahead and act on those things. Now, if, if the staff comes back in the interim and uh, at a subsequent meeting and you know expresses problems with site visits, you can do a site visit, no, absolutely no question. There's some practical problems and I understand staff is concerned about that, but you can do it. And if five members of the commission want to do it, then let's go ahead and make that decision now, su su uh, schedule a time for that the week before and let's move forward. Thank you. Does county council have comments on this suggestion? M Madam Chair and Commissioners, you, you've had a lot of options thrown at you, um, but what I have heard from the Commission is that it seems to be the majority is the consensus is that you'd like to have a site visit, yes. a scheduled meeting for a site visit. So I think that um, at this point, you could go ahead and um, either continue the item to June as Dr. Russell suggested, and um, have this discussion for when you're going to schedule the next items, or continue the whole item to September, and at that time, we could discuss when to have the site visit. All right, how would the commission like to proceed? <laughs> I'd like to make a motion. Ma Ma Madam Chair, may I? Mr. please. May, may I 
Of course, uh, sir. Please. Uh, we would really not like to wait to September to, to make a motion to go do a site visit. We're, we're very open to the site visit prior to the meeting, but to wait till September to decide to then go see the site to then have to come yeah. back for another meeting, no. that yeah. doesn't yeah. seem to serve but anyone. We're, so. we're with you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Overall, please. I'd like to make a motion to continue the, the project until September and to schedule a site visit for the week before. Is there I'll a second that motion. Is there discussion on the motion? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, all right. So That's that. that item is, is finished. Uh, we will now move on to um, item one. We'll take a five-minute break, and Commissioner Overall will be leaving us. Um, <laughs> so thank you. Bye. <laughs> Where's he going? Huh? Ms. Um, Foster, would you please read it into the record? Thank you, Madam Chair. The following is a request of Jay Higgins of SAC Wireless, agent for applicant Verizon Wireless, to consider case number 12 CUP7, <coughs> excuse me, application filed on March 29th, 2012 and to determine that the project is exempt from CEQA pursuant to section 15301 of the state guidelines for the implementation to the California Environmental Quality Act. Thank you so much. We will now move to the county staff report, please, Ms. Lowry. Good morning, members of the commission and members of the public. My name is Megan Lowry. I'm the project planner for 12 CUP Verizon Wireless Facility at the Montecito Switch Station building. To orient you to the project site, um, it is an existing switch station building located on Santa Angela Lane, fronting East Valley Road in the Upper Village uh, area of Montecito. The property is zoned 20R1 residential. The combined two parcels equal um, 0.87 acres. It is within the Montecito Community Plan area and is designated as urban inland land. Currently, the property is used as a switch station operation building for Verizon California, which is the landline company. That is to distinguish it from the applicant who is Verizon Wireless, the cell phone carrier. In 2002, Singular Wireless actually applied to um, place a cellular facility on the rooftop of the switch station building that was approved and is currently existing on site. Here are some pictures of the switch station building um, from East Valley Road, and then looking down Santa Angela Lane. Yep. Here's a view into the entrance of the parking lot with the gate open, and then the western property line as viewed from Santa Angela Lane. Here's the back side or the north side of the building as viewed from inside the parking lot. And just want to point your attention to the top part of the building is actually the existing RF transparent parapet that hides or screens the existing singular wireless facility. Here's a view also from inside the parking lot looking towards the entrance way and you can see the existing singular equipment shelter. The proposed project is for Verizon Wireless, the cell phone carrier. They're proposing to add nine panel antennas also to the rooftop. They would be located behind the existing parapet facade that Singular has constructed. In addition to the panel antennas, th they would also propose an equipment shelter that would be located on the side of the parking lot um, adjacent to Singular Wireless's ex existing equipment shelter. The issues involved with these types of applications um, generally start with aesthetics. In this particular application, the design has screened the antennas behind an existing parapet wall using existing infrastructure, and the equipment shelter would be screened in the parking lot area by the existing wall and mature vegetation, so it would not be seen from the side, um, from the public view on Santa Angela Lane. The next issue area we typically see with telecommunications applications is that of health and safety. These types of facilities must comply with federal communication standards at all times as a li licensed wireless carrier. 
As part of the project application, Verizon Wireless submitted a Hammett and Edison report that analyzed the emissions from the existing facility, the proposed facility, and the emissions combined from both facilities operating simultaneously. The report concluded that the facili facilities would be at 9.5% of the applicable FCC limit and therefore would meet the health and safety thresholds of the FCC. Lastly, our ordinance directs us also to look at the demonstrated need for service. This is a new finding that was added in the telecommunications ordinance in the last um, ordinance update in 2011. In this particular case, um, Verizon Wireless, as part of their <coughs> application, has explained that they have an existing facility at the QAD property in Summerland on Ortega Hill Ridge Road um, that is currently being decommissioned. It's an older site that has um, served the majority of the Montecito area for Verizon Wireless coverage. With the loss of this facility, um, there would be a void in service for Verizon Wireless in the Montecito area. This proposed facility would serve to fill that void. Here are the coverage maps provided by the applicant as part of their application. This is the coverage that would, um, for Verizon Wireless, without the QAD site. The green is the, the best service, yellow being the next, and then red and black are being no service. The star indicates the proposed location for the new facility, and this would be the increased coverage of the Montecito area with the proposed site. In conclusion, the proposed project co-locates with existing infrastructure. It blends with the existing development and character of the community. It meets the applicable FCC limits for health and safety. It is allowed under the Tier 4 telecommunications facilities with the major conditional use permit approved by your commission and meets all applicable development standards and policies. With that, staff recommends that your commission make the required findings for approval, including the CEQA findings, determine that the project is exempt under CEQA guidelines sections 15301 and 15303, and approve the project subject to the conditions. And that concludes staff's presentation. Thank you. Does the commission have any questions or comments of staff's report? Mr. Phillips, please. Thank you. You pointed out nine antenna, antennae, maybe. Uh, is that all of the additional incremental building coming to the site, I seem to remember something else happening. Um, so, uh, kind of a, an, inc an additional building of some sort. Is that true? Commissioner um, Phillips, that is true. There's an equipment shelter that's proposed. Can you talk about that? Sure. And I'll go back to the slide. It shows a picture of the equipment shelter. So in addition to the antennas being mounted on the rooftop behind the parapet wall, there would also be an equipment shelter um, about 192 square feet. Um, it's a prefab prefabricated equipment shelter similar to the existing singular wireless um, equipment shelter and that holds the ancillary equipment that supports the antennas on the roof. And where is that going to be located? Is it outside of the structure with the parapet surrounding? Is it outside of that? Correct. It is on um, on the eastern property, um, I'm sorry, western property line adjacent to the, the singular one. I can go back to also, oh, behind the existing wall. Here's a picture of the existing facility. So this is singular wireless's existing equipment shelter. The proposed Verizon shelter would be nearly identical to this and it would be to the right in this photo of that existing shelter. So the, the, uh, the right to co-locate uh, brings with it the right to build another structure necessarily or is this discretionary? M Mr. Um, Madam Chair, Commissioner Phillips, I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, the definition for co-location is to co-locate on any existing tower support structure or other structure so the antennas themselves are being mounted on the building. I understand that but do you get to bring a new building with you? 
if that's that's the proposed project um, and it, there are no specific requirements as far as what's not allowed um, so they are allowed to propose new equipment so theoretically sure. other carriers that co-locate can also bring a building correct in the future correct so it's not going to stop there will be more and more buildings somewhere on this property um, so it's about that size, you say, and right next to it in that gr little grassy area? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Is that a private home? What are we seeing a, a just a bit of under the cypress tree? Madam Chair, yes, that's the existing home on Santa Angela Lane. Does the fence that I see to the right of the small building, is that, does that fence go with the private property where the car is? Or is that some other building back there? To the right, um, uh, mm -hmm. to the right of the um, Verizon building. Oh, this oh, is the is existing um, per um, perimeter wall of the okay, Verizon facility. Okay. So that is, it's on their property and then there's existing mature vegetation on the other side of it that would serve to screen the proposed equipment shelter. I can show you a view from, this is the street, this is from Santa Angela Lane looking um, on the other side of that wall. Madam Chair, is there, has there been any notice to the property owners about this? Have this? Madam Chair, Commissioner Phillips, yes, the project has been noticed as part of the application completeness and, and, and also this part of this hearing. All right, any other questions in regard to the staff report? Commissioner Idelson, please. Okay, when I'm looking at this fold out part, which do you have a slide on that it shows <clears throat> let's see I'm seeing that building the equipment uh, I don't know what page I have C1 if you look at a at, at, at sheet number a1 of that it's very clear where A1 the new yes. building is being proposed as opposed to the old building you know um, from what I, you know, I, I think from a philosophical point of view, I mean, that all of it is screened, you know, it, it, and I think that it is a, that in the future we can expect to see some further development of this particular site. You know, it is the only site in Montecito where we've got kind of a hub of activity Verizon singular what whoever else you know and there's room on you know I mean if there were to be another carrier come in and they needed another little building to do their thing well it, there's plenty of room here you know and as a community we have demands that we have cell service and you know whether it's Verizon singular or whoever those the other people were this seems to be it's go this site is going to get impacted for for in the future and I think as a community we just kind of go well wait a second it's got to go somewhere this is a really good site it's very contained you know it's it's like attached to the commercial district it doesn't it doesn't cause anybody any inconvenience the neighbors, I, I know when we, when Verizon, I don't know if it was Verizon, when they came in and they put that whole sheet on the outside of the building a few years ago of, like, you can see it on the pictures, you know, it, it the community isn't, isn't upset about this, you know, it's certainly not as upset as they were the last time we dealt with a, a, a cell company so for me uh, I don't have any problem with this project at all and would like to move it forward if there's no other Thank continued you. discussion Mr. Idelson, I, I still have <coughs> a concern I, I, I understand and I agree with my colleague that high density there is going to happen more facilities what I want to know is the kind of screening that we can expect not uh, not only out of this one because it is a prefab what 11 11 feet 4 inches by 16 feet equipment shelter <coughs> that the screening is adequate as well as it will be for several others assuming others are coming in Sorry. 
Madam Chair, Commissioner Adelson, I believe the existing screening is sufficient for the proposed project as well as future projects um, as the mature vegetation that exists on the property exceeds the height of the proposed shelter quite a bit, um, especially on this side of the property. Okay. Any other questions? Just briefly, um, the we, we pray that the testing is, is correct. <laughs> we, we have a preschool across the street. We sure do. And um, let me ask you this. Is there a cumulative effect of mm. three carriers producing more emission as opposed to one, or do they stand separately? Is, is there, I can, I can say this better. Do you, mean, you know what I mean? I can restate it if you want. Madam Chair, Commissioner Phillips. Does this affect the total emission output <coughs> of the additional? My best um, knowledge of that is definitely carriers um, ha operate in different bandwidths, especially in depending on the, the service they are providing, whether it's cellular, LTE data. Um, there are different bandwidths and different frequencies assigned to them in their licenses. However, um, the addition of facilities um, next to each other could potentially have a communal effect, and that's why the FCC standards actually require that emissions um, levels or the standards are a cumulative assessment of all emissions contributing um, in those cellular bandwidths. So that is the FCC standard is a cumulative measurement, and it's supposed to be a 24 hour, 365 days a year. Um, measurement that it needs to meet those standards. So the 9.5 brings in cellular's emission? Or is it just the stand, is, is, is the 9.5 percent of the FCC public emission standard, is that just for Verizon projected? Commissioner Phillips, that's a cumulative projection. Um, it includes the other side. emission from that site? Correct. That includes both the s existing singular antennas as well as proposed Verizon antennas. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before we go to the applicant, I would like to say, if you would like to have public comment on this, please fill out a speaker slip, and we will get to that later. Um, we'll now move to the applicant. John Archer. Well, Sir, we, we want to hear from the applicant first, and then we will go to public oh, comment. Yes. Thank you. I didn't make that clear. Sir, please state your name for the record. Good morning, Good Madam morning. Chair. I'm Jay Higgins. I'm here today representing Verizon Wireless. Um, first, thanks to staff for working with us. Uh, we were deemed complete shortly after our submittal, and um, we're grateful they found us a spot on an agenda for you fairly quickly. Um, it's true that we are operating on a uh, compressed time frame on this particular project uh, due to a site coming off the air um, up at the QAD building. <coughs> so if we don't find a replacement, <coughs> excuse me, and have a site built by the end of the summer, uh, there will be a service outage in Montecito. Um, the affected areas will be along Highway 101 in between <laughs> Sheffield and Cabrillo, um, in the Upper Village, parts of Coast Village Road, and into the foothills. Um, and we believe these areas, uh, these are areas that are prone to fire emergency, um, ought not to be without wireless service for any amount of time. Uh, we did bring the project to the Montecito Association a couple of weeks ago. Um, they appeared supportive, uh, especially um, as it relates to us replacing one site with a new one. So the, 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 you're right, um, the location here um, is ideal and it's something that, that is consistent with your code. Um, and we find it uh, in many agencies, California, coast, especially coastal California cities that we operate in, all of the ordinances that, that we see that are coming out um, in the last 10 years and recently all sort of do the same thing. They encourage facilities to be on commercial buildings um, as opposed to monopoles um, such as the QAD uh, facility. You, I don't think you'd, you'd uh, Santa Barbara County certainly wouldn't approve that in um, these days and many other California communities would not either. Um, <clears throat> it's also a co-location. That's another similar uh, policy we see in a lot of coastal California cities where there's a, a site that's already operating for under good land use policy the the communities like to see th uh, that be co-located on um, and with regard to Commissioner Phillips question um, the co-location um, and Miss Lowry um, uh, elaborated on this is is typically referred to in terms of the structure that the antennas are on 
and doesn't necessarily relate to the radio equipment and computer equipment that that allows the different carriers to operate in different bandwidths. So we could not use Singular's radio equipment because we would then be within their their bandwidth. So we wouldn't that wouldn't that would be that would be just be too much sharing. We would like to offer a different <laughs> service and a different <laughs> bandwidth, and that's just a different company's um, uh, ability to provide a different level of service and competition for the community. So that equipment and radio gear goes in inside the prefab shelter, comes off a truck already stuffed with, with everything. And if you look at the parking lot, it's, um, there's a lot of room back there. And another carrier coming to you um, would necessarily need to locate their equipment that in a, in a way that didn't encroach into the setbacks, maybe didn't take out any vegetation or trees like, like we are uh, not doing, um, didn't take out any parking, and was screened. And in, per in relation, uh, as it relates to the uh, antenna location, I'm going to point to something and then I'll be right back to the microphone. Please. That rectangular shape on the roof plan uh, is the existing parapet up on the roof. And should another carrier come to locate equipment uh, at this particular property, they'd have to jump through a num number of hoops, one of which is can they um, afford to uh, negotiate with the property owner, the building owner? Um, uh, do they find it suitable in relation to where their other sites are in Montecito? That's a big question. Does it work for an engineering standpoint? And can they de design something that is wholly contained within the existing building or parapet? Uh, my personal opinion is if another carrier came, they would probably need to move their antennas away from the Verizon and Singular antennas from a, uh, an interference standpoint. And so they, they would then have to come before you to either put up another structure on the roof or additional parapets, and that would be something that would be subject to the, uh, the BAR. In, in our case, we are not making any uh, physical changes to the building, completely hiding the antennas uh, behind existing parapets, and I don't think you'll, you'll find that's a reality for another carrier. Um, as to the location, again, it, it is an ideal site for the community because it's generally located in the middle of Montecito as opposed to the QAD facility that's off to the side. Um, Montecito is a difficult area to cover uh, because of the terrain and tree cover. So bringing a site that's closer into uh, where the demand is is, uh, is ideal, especially for those residents and businesses in the upper village. Um, again, the design is, is essentially invisible. Um, and the equipment shelter won't be seen because of the height of the existing block wall and the mature vegetation back there. Um, you know, uh, nationwide we see uh, in the industry the trend that uh, households are going completely wireless. They're ditching their landline uh, services. And right now that's at about 30%. I don't know what it, the number is for uh, Santa Barbara County, but na nationally we can assume that there's a similar trend here. Um, and most families are doing that because of cost. But really, um, the, the bottom line is uh, people are, are making that switch because the landline handset just doesn't compete with the wireless handset. You, you, you have a wireless, wireless handset that comes with uh, 4G data services and uh, the internet uh, capability of your home computer these days with 4G, and that is something that Verizon will deploy here. Um, so it's, it's, it's not even a question of competition anymore. Um, and this relocation, because it's coming closer into where the customers are, will um, uh, not only improve coverage, um, it'll hopefully allow more households the option to, d to um, uh, cancel their landline phone service. And that's a big cost savings for folks. So um, in summary, uh, we'd urge you here today to um, in light of the fact that we're removing a facility that was developed over 20 years ago on a very prominent uh, hilltop in a very unstealth manner, um, and we're moving that facility to a commercial building uh, and incorporating a design that will render it uh, essentially invisible to the community, uh, there are no visual or architectural impacts. <coughs> and because the facility will be closer to its customers, it will the service will improve. Uh, we're consistent with your ordinance and we have the support of staff uh, and this facility is obviously going to be used and needed in case of fire emergencies, especially by service personnel and um, 
Yeah, that really concludes my comments. I can answer any questions you may have. Are there questions for Mr. Higgins? <clears throat> Mr. Idelson, please. Yes, will you have an outage between uh, the time that you demolish the existing structure and, and have this one put up? In a night, uh, Commissioner uh, Edelson, in, in an ideal world, we would receive approvals from the commission here today and um, uh, be in into the building department for plan check and then build the site in the summer and we would not have a gap. But um, yeah, as you know, uh, we are subject to uh, uh, an appeal and uh, we certainly hope that we could get through the process without having a gap. But um, it depends on uh, whether or not we're appealed, to be honest with you. Thank you. Any other questions? Questions Mr. for Sorry. staff? Yes? Ms. Lowry? I have a question. Yeah. Um, do we need uh, to find that um, the applicant ha has a necessity to co-locate? Because I'm not sure they do. Is it incumbent upon us to make that finding that since they have to, since the site is no longer viable, the co-location is appropriate, it sounds like this is just a better site, and is that all they need to show, and is that all we need to worry about? Shall I ask the applicant? Madam Chair, Commissioner Phillips, I'm not sh sure I understand the question. What, I, what, is the, uh, what is the obligation the applicant needs to establish to, co uh, to re co locate? To co locate. Is it simply we want to? It's there and we want to. Is that all they need? Correct. Because it's not a lease issue then. It, this is just a better site for them. Is that it? Yeah, why are they moving? The previous, so. Um, as in regards to the co-location, yes, they are choosing to co-locate in this option. And that's all we need to know? Correct. Okay. There are, um, I'll add to that, in the telecommunications ordinance, there are um, development standards that encourage co-location and, and in part of our review process, um, there are options of whether or not co-location um, is feasible or infeasible. In this instance, it is feasible. Um, where others are, it is infeasible, we do go through that process in determining that. Um, in this application, they've chosen to, it's feasible, um, and it's a good design that works with the development standards. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mr. Higgins, did you, would you like to say something? Madam Chair, if I may, uh, to Commissioner Phillips' uh, point, we have spent, we, we knew this was coming with the, the decommissioning of the QAD site for some time, and so we've been working with uh, engineering teams and real estate teams in the area for some time to locate other suitable candidates and we just cannot. The, not all property owners want this, not all properties have room, not all the properties make sense from an engineering standpoint. So this is an ideal uh, candidate with or without singular up on the roof. All right, thank you. Any further questions from the commission? At this time I would like to ask for site visits. Have, uh, would we please disclose site visits? Commissioner Gostanger? Oh, oh. Did you visit the site? Um, um, I'm very familiar with the site. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner Phillips. I am as well. We looked at this in 2002 and looked, had a closer look then, but I'm aware of where it is. All right. Commissioner I'm familiar with the site. And I am as well. At this time, we will go to public comment. And we have one. Um, Dan. Don. Don. Yeah. Please. Hi. How are you? Please take a, uh, go to the microphone, to the podium. In one month, it'll be uh, 50 years since I moved to Montecito, <laughs> before most of you were born. <laughs> and, uh, we wish. <laughs> I live just up the street, three doors, for, uh, three houses up from the uh, lo location here. So I'm concerned about radiation power levels. In fact, if when I'm lying in bed, I look out my balcony window and I see the rooftop. So I uh, sp spend about a third of my life in bed, so it's important for... Uh, uh, cumulative radiation. Now, I have a lot of background in this area of microwave radiation. I graduated from MIT with a degree in electrical engineering, and I worked for 40 years designing microwave antennas. And 
While I was at uh, Raytheon in, uh, in, Mon in Goleta, I was in charge of radiation safety. And no one was permitted to turn on a transmitter until they submitted a report that guaranteed that at no location where humans could be would the level exceed the 10 milliwatts per, per square centimeter. So uh, I would like to see such calculations for the, this site. Now, I'm at my bed, I'm uh, uh, nine, about uh, 400 feet from that rooftop. But there are locations a lot closer. Down the street, uh, uh, there are families with uh, small children that would be exposed at much higher levels than I see at my house. In fact, in that preschool you talked about across the street, uh, you could be as close as 100 feet which would give you 16 times the intensity of radiation as I would see at my house. So that's what I'm really concerned about. We have one of the mothers here of uh, some of these small children <coughs> down the street, and uh, I just hate to see them exposed for any length of time to this high level of radiation. So if possible, I'd like to see calculations from the uh, Verizon people about uh, what their intensity level is, and uh, and maybe have them uh, submit a similar report that I used to get at Raytheon from uh, people who did the transmission. Thank you. So I think we, yes, please go ahead. I'm sorry. That's a, that's well. That's all of my comments. It just uh, I'm re much more concerned about all these little kids, especially across the street at that uh, preschool. Uh, they could, they could get pretty intense levels, or at least much higher than I see at my place. But uh, I'd like to see their uh, analysis to uh, show what their levels are. Thank you. Commissioner Idelson has some question, I think. Uh, Commissioner Phillips, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate your testimony and your background is helpful. Are you comforted at all that the finding is that a cumulative emission is 9.5% of the permissible. So let's assume that's wrong by 10%. We're still in a comfortable range, yeah. wouldn't you say? I mean, shouldn't I be comforted by that number? Well, I'd like to see the analysis. Is there something um, we're missing? Is the, is the, is it's a cumulative effect, yes. So it's 9.5% of federal permissible levels. That's, that's well within a comfort range, I would think. At what distance? At what distance indeed? I don't know that. Yeah, uh, I'd like to see where, I'd like yeah. to see the calculations. Mm -hmm. Maybe the applicant has that number for us. And can you stand by because I don't understand what he's saying probably and I might ask you okay. for your input. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Uh, if you would just uh, stand to the side for just a moment and we'll get an answer to this question. Is that okay? And then move on to yours? Yeah. No, no I'm actually pointed out, I just wanted to point out that I in our staff report, it is really clear that staff has said as part of the permit application, the applicant has provided a radio frequency emissions report prepared by Hammond and Edison dated uh, May 2nd, 2012. So this in, this information that you're saying that you want to see, I like, yes. you know, you you want to go over there and talk to, um, I'm sorry. Ms. Lowry. Yeah, you know, because she, because she, this, this information would not, uh, was brought to this commission as part of the whole project. So we do have that information and staff has reviewed that information and found that it complies with the FCC things, whatever, emiss emission standards. Yeah. So we know that already. We, we okay. go in right. according to what staff is telling us, this commission, we already know that, you know. So is there something that you can provide this speaker that, um, so that he understands that all of this work was done prior to it coming to the commission. If the speaker has questions, that it may be that some in our audience do as well. And Mr. Higgins is here. Would you like to address the question before us, please? Oh, wait, would you say that again? <laughs> um, We're Mr. Have Higgins is oh, here, here from Verizon, and okay. he 
can address some of your concerns. Okay. So if you would like to step aside for just a moment, then maybe we can continue with your other questions. Okay. Thank you. Madam Chair, Jay Higgins uh, with Verizon Wireless. Um, you know, I'm not an engineer. Um, and um, anecdotally, I can tell you, though, that I've been in the business off and on for a number of years, and I have read a lot of the materials, and there's a lots to read. And I try to keep current with it. Um, uh, None of the materials seem to satisfy anybody on either side of the argument, by the way. And uh, um, I can tell you also that uh, about two years ago, a facility went in um, by T-Mobile about 250 feet from my home. Uh, and I, right out my bedroom window, I see it every day. I have two kids in my house, and it doesn't bother me um, at all. Um, and I have read all the materials, too. So um, in terms of the question, though, that was asked, in the RF study, safety study that we provide as a part of our application by Hammett and Edison, um, it appears on the in the first paragraph of the study results, if uh, Ms. Lowry can uh, corroborate this, um, that what happens when a, uh, a study is done is that the county says if there's a if there's a carrier there already we want you to go out and take a measurement of what's there with a, a meter and then and then add to that the the projected level of of rf that's going to come from the uh, the new facility and the electrical engineering crews all have good computer models that can predict that based on primarily how close the antenna is to the ground and also the kind of antenna. Um, and so what they do is they project a maximum worst case scenario operating at, at full strength, which by the way, in my, in my experience, is never the actual amount. So they'll always overestimate. Um, but in this case, on one particular part of the pro uh, adjacent to the property, closest to where the antennas are, the maximum calculated emission would be point 0.051 milliwatts, which I think is, is less than um, what the previous speaker uh, referred to. Now, that, that signal strength dissipates exponentially as you move away from the antennas. So our exhibit that we provided, or our study, does have an exhibit in the back that also predicts around the property where uh, or what the levels is are pr predicted to be around the property and that and at one point um, up San Angelo Lane it's at its highest across the street at the uh, preschool it's about half that amount and various other spots because of the the maybe terrain or distance from the antennas and the existing parapet walls are they're much uh, less uh, much lower as well so I'm happy to uh, provide this and have a conversation with uh, the speaker afterward we, we um, can work with them and and maybe do further testing if, if he uh, would like. I know that the county will require us to go back out post-construction and take a meter and actually measure the actual uh, emissions. And I, I, I won't bet any body parts on it, but I can almost guarantee that it'll be much lower than what we're, we're stating here, which is, by the engineer's words, overstated. Mr. Higgins, have you met with the uh, school across the street? Uh, no, I, uh, we have not met with, uh, with the school. All right, thank you. Sir, did you have any further questions or comments? No. All right, thank you so much. We also have a, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Russell, please. No, that's okay, please proceed. All right, uh, we have a request from Denise Alec to speak, please. Please state your name for the record. Uh, Madam Chair and Commissioner Phillips, County Staff, my name is Denise Alec. And I represent the owner of the building at 559 San Isidro, which we were noticed on, on this uh, request. And uh, also for Mr. Higgins, our, my request is really that building is the existing building. My understanding is not habited at the moment, not being utilized, decommissioned by um, its previous use. And I am wondering why that facility the existing facility can't be used instead of erecting another structure. Even though it's only 192 square feet, there's already a building in place, and I'd like to know why that can't be utilized. All right. Um, any further comments no. on that? Thank if you. not, we'll ask the county please to respond to the question. Uh, 
Madam Chair and members of the Commission, um, I'll answer that question to the best of my ability and then Thank have you. the applicant respond if I'm yes. missing something. Um, my understanding of usually is for access and maintenance of the site, they like to have an equipment um, shelter that they can access and have their equipment in and get to um, in the event of an outage or any needed repairs um, and also for protection and liability of their workers. Um, but I'll have the applicant address if any other concerns regarding having their own shelter. Mr. Higgins, please. Uh, Madam Chair, Jay Higgins, uh, to the question of the uh, uh, speaker. Uh, it's Verizon um, landline, and it really bears no relation to Verizon Wireless. They're two completely different companies. Um, and the, the facility ins that's, uh, or the equipment that's inside the building is not, in fact, being decommissioned. That's actually uh, being outfitted with fiber um, so that all of the phone lines and the traditional landline, uh, the landline uh, services to homes in Montecito will have a fiber connection. So uh, while there's not as much use inside that building as there once, once was, um, and while there's not as many employees at the site, it is in fact still being used. And uh, Ms. Lowry uh, answered the question correctly. It's really a question of maintenance. Um, Verizon Wireless will get a key to open the gate and they can go inside the shelter and uh, manipulate the equipment, the radio equipment specific to the cel cellular uh, facility, but they don't uh, need to go inside the actual landline telephone company's building and do anything so that access isn't provided. And, and to the extent that they need to get up on the roof to look at the antennas, they can arrange for that access, but um, uh, that's, that would be extremely rare that once installed, uh, a, a Verizon techni or wireless technician would have to get up onto the roof. Are there any other public comments or questions? We have one more speaker. Martha Kay, please. Hello, my name is Martha Kay. I grew up on Santa Angela Lane a few years ago. As a 12-year-old, we moved there. I was in attendance in 2002 when this came before your um, commission. And I couldn't remember if it had been eight years ago or 10 years ago. Uh, things are, are not as clear as they were back then. But I'm, I'm uh, hearing that that this is an ideal site, according to Mr. Higgins, who represents Verizon. Um, and I, I have some, I've taken a couple of notes here, and I'm wondering a little bit about the fact that Singular already has this equipment building there on the site, and if they indeed, this is a question, are that hopefully will be able to be answered if they have uh, use of the antennas that have been on the building and if these are indeed wireless antennas with singular uh, we're talking about a landline uh, Verizon it sounds like um, already in place there and it seems to me that the emergency that came up at the CAD site for wireless um, should not really drive the relocation of this uh, this uh, this new uh, uh, occupant or, or usage of the building on San Angela Lane and I have another question um, regarding the successful rejection of the idea of a wireless facility near the Montecito YMCA and Montecito Union School on San Ysidro Road um, not that long ago. If this was uh, a Verizon request, uh, possibly members of the commission could let me know that, or if, if indeed you're, uh, you're aware of, of that most recent um, uh, excuse me, I'm, I didn't plan to speak, so I'm, I'm kind of, I, right. I had these questions You're in my mind, fine. but I also um, have 
um, our family has our, our old house for that is a rental now and has been um, a rental on San Ysidro for many years after my mother died. And the family that presently rents that house has three small children, has two small children and one young man who's ready to go on to middle school. And there are more children on San Angela Lane now than there were 10 years ago when this came before you. Um, I also go to the church down at the bottom of the street and I try to contact the director of the preschool to ask if she was aware, but she wasn't on board 10 years ago with the same um, job that she has now as director and I wasn't able to hear back from her so that was why I attended today to see if I could find out more information. But after Mr. Higgins comments about the position of the parapet where the the antennas are, are behind this concrete parapet is how I'm interpreting it. It sounds like the residents of Santa Angela are really in more direct line uh, to these radio waves than the kids across the street. And I have um, you know, a concern for anyone, whether they're children or adults, but I especially have, and the fact that I've grown to, to love and um, know the family that's been in residence there at the house for more than two years now. I, I respect their, um, their concerns as well for what, what we're about. They were not in Santa Barbara at that time and don't have some of the history behind some of this. So I, I wonder if, if, you, if my questions are clear regarding um, the reasoning behind this being such an ideal site just because it's there um, and whether Verizon um, has, has truly looked anywhere else in the area that's not so close to, to um, large numbers of children and were they indeed the group that we're looking to to locate on San Ysidro Road at the, the cross section there where the YMCA and Montecito Union School are. Thank you for listening and I do hope that this um, still has more time to be contemplated by the community because just the fact that there aren't a whole lot of us here right now, I don't think um, represents the idea that we're, we think this is such a great idea which we don't. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kay. Mm -hmm. um, you raised a number of questions, and I will ask the county. In regard to the proposal to locate something, and i sorry I don't remember, near Montecito Union and the YMCA, uh, could you please tell us uh, the status on that? It was three years ago, four years ago? Madam Chair, I believe the project that you're referencing is the Next G Distributed yes. Antenna System That's right. project. Um, they had proposed a site um, on a utility pole near the YMCA on San Ysidro Road, and then um, during a series of hearings for that and other sites in Montecito, they withdrew that particular application, um, and it voluntarily in addition to the one on, I think, Schoolhouse Road was the I other so. referenced one. Those were voluntary withdrawals um, that the app Next G uh, network. So Next Next G is actually not a carrier. They um, build the infrastructure um, for carriers. And in that particular scenario, uh, those two sites were applications for a Metro PCS. All right. Thank you so much, um, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, the public should know that the withdrawal by Next G was not the result of emissions being too strong for that location. Uh, it, was a, it was a decision to avoid more discussion, it seemed to me. And uh, so I think it's important that that not be s inferenced. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Mr. Higgins, would you like to address um, some of the concerns that Ms. Kay uh, had during her comment period? Uh, <clears throat> Madam Chair, Jay Higgins with Verizon Wireless. Um, if I can remember them, I, I um, 
Oh, I guess what stood out was t was the rationale behind this site as yes. it relates to the QAD property. Could you let me let it? me be clear. An ideal site would be a, a hundred foot monopole right in the middle of the, that intersection. That would be great for Verizon Wireless. So when I, when we say ideal, this is not ideal. But I, uh, my opinion as a land use planner, knowing how <laughs> California agencies work with the industry, from a siting and design and architectural standpoint. This appears to be an ideal location. Um, I think that um, the county is, is going to have um, a hard time, if you will, making uh, findings that this is a, a facility that could be uh, supported by a denial in, in that there are no physical effects um, in terms of visual effect and I don't know how else you're allowed to regulate this but for those impacts now uh, I've been in the business for a long time and, and sometimes physical effects don't matter and so I, I'd, I'd ask you to make a decision based on staff's recommendation today and um, and hold us accountable to reach out to those that are concerned and go to the school if you'd like us to do that uh, to have a meeting and and it's it's going to be um, a requirement uh, I sense um, <clears throat> regardless of your decision here that we are going to be uh, involved in further conversations with the neighborhood and, and perhaps the school and anybody that wants and so my phone number is in the record and I'm happy to do a community meeting uh, 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 after this at any time and uh, we we want to make it clear though that um, that we're operating not in a, uh, a proposal to simply improve uh, people's ability to get the internet on the phone. This is actually a, a serious issue with uh, a carrier that's been in business longer than anybody else with the most amount of customers, with the most amount to lose in case of an emergency. And Verizon Wireless has, is, has a good relationship with the county based on are doing business here in these forums and and in terms of providing emergency uh, uh, cellular uh, facilities when the landline systems go out so they're invested and uh, personally I'm invested I've been here in the community practicing for a long time and so I'm, I'm certainly willing to um, uh, provide uh, additional forums and materials to, to the extent we can get people comfortable with with what's happening here Mr. Phillips, please. Uh, thank you. Um, indeed, our our jurisdiction is is aesthetic, I, I suppose, and we're preempted by federal law, looking too hard into the science. But as you reach out to the community, if you could do a good job on the science level, I think a lot of people would be more comfortable. Okay. The admission issue. Mr. Idelson, please. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. You've <coughs> you provided exactly the dialogue I wanted. Exactly. Thank you very much. And I agree with Commissioner Phillips on this. Uh, we do need more community outreach, and I would urge the community to get involved uh, to become informed. Commissioner Gustinger, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll bring it back to the co Is there any other public comment? Then we'll bring it back to the Commission for discussion and action. Commissioner Gustinger, please. Yeah, Madam Chair, I'd like to uh, make a motion to um, uh, make the required the <coughs> the motion to um, support staff's recommendation to make the required findings for approval for the FOG project, including CEQA findings, determine the project is exempt from the provisions of CEQA, and approve the project. Um, 12 CUP string 000007 um, subject to the conditions um, of approval. Is there a second? I second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 It was unanimous. Um, thank you to the community for being here. Stay involved. We like that. It's a good thing for Montecito. Thank you all for coming. If there's no more business before the commission, we are adjourned. <laughs>